A very good evening aspirants welcome to daily newspaper analysis of Shankar IAS Academy today's date is 3rd of June 2024 now before getting into the news article discussion i have an important announcement for you it is regarding our all india prelims free mock test as you all know prelims is approaching it is on 16th of june we have one test left coming on the 9th june 2024 which is on sunday if you have not registered for the test we have attached the registration link in the description just register for the test and check your prelims preparedness for free so with this announcement let us move on to the list of articles for today's news article discussion we have taken article from yesterday's newspaper as well so without much delay let us get into the news article discussion Look at this first question about small finance banks in India. Here three statements are given and you have to find which of the statements given here is or are correct. Now before trying to answer this particular question let us understand what is small finance bank. CSFBs are a category of banks that are established to provide basic banking services and credit facilities to underserved sections of the population. So who are the underserved sections of the population? They include small business owners, micro and small industries, farmers and unorganized sector. Some of the examples of SFBs are Capital Small Finance Bank, Ujjivan, Utkarsh and etc. So here you might have a doubt what is the aim of this particular SFB see its important objective is to provide financial inclusion to the segment of the population who are often excluded from the traditional banking system SFBs help them to have access to financial products like small loans savings insurance and other basic banking services talking about the regulation of SFB they are regulated by RBI all norms and regulations of the RBI that are applicable to commercial banks including the requirement of maintenance of CRR and SLR are also applicable to SFBs also according to RBI if an SFB wants to become a universal bank it has to complete a satisfactory track record of performance for a minimum period of 5 years So with this basic understanding now let us try to solve this particular question here the first statement says the purpose of setting up of small finance bank is to supply credit to small business units is this statement is correct yes obviously it is correct and the second statement says to supply credit to small and marginal farmers this statement is also correct now look at the third statements this statement says to encourage young entrepreneurs to set up business particularly in rural areas see this third statement is incorrect there is no explicit provision stating that sfbs were established to encourage the establishment of businesses in rural areas so this statement is alone incorrect if you could eliminate this you can easily arrive at the answer which is option a 1 and 2 only moving on look at this question what is the application of somatic cell nuclear transfer technology see here the correct answer is option c reproductive cloning of animals those who don't know know that somatic cell nuclear transfer is a cloning technique used to create an organism that is genetically identical to another organism the process involves transferring the nucleus of a somatic cell that is a non reproductive cell into an egg cell that has had its nucleus removed or to say in simple words firstly a nucleus is extracted from a somatic cell somatic cells are non reproductive cells of an organism this cell is taken to be cloned the opposite to somatic cells or germline cells these are the sex cells that is the egg from the female and the sperms from the male these sex cells are alone called as germline except that other body cells that is not reproductive in the nature they are called as somatic okay so firstly a nucleus is extracted from a somatic cell next the nucleus of an egg cell is removed leaving an empty excel now the nucleus from the somatic cell is inserted into this empty excel and it is allowed to develop into an embryo finally this embryo is implanted into a surrogate mother where it can grow and develop into a clone of the original organism this technology is famously known for its use in cloning dolly the sheep which is the first mammal cloned from an adult somatic cell okay so this is why the third option is correct in this particular question now look at other options as well first option says production of bio larvicides see bio larvicides or biological agents used to control mosquito larvae 
they are produced using bacteria or other biological methods but not through somatic cell nuclear transfer technology okay so this option is incorrect now the second option says manufacture of biodegradable plastics see biodegradable plastics are made from natural materials like plant starch or microorganisms the production process involves chemical and biological methods and not cloning technique like sant so this is also incorrect now the fourth option says production of organism free of disease see disease free organisms are typically produced through selective breeding genetic modification or using other biotechnological methods and not specifically through sant and again upsc says you to pick the most appropriate answer even if there is two answers that are close to each other if you see in that way also the correct answer is option c so these praise the question discussion now let us move on to the news article discussion look at this article from yesterday's newspaper this article speaks about the possibility of creating a new palestine state to solve the israel palestine issue so in our discussion let us see about the concept of two state solution and whether it is possible or not now before getting into that main part let us summarize the events that happened last year see as you all know hamas is a militant organization in palestine it attacked israel on october 7 2023 and israel retaliated with full scale war on palestine the ongoing war on gaza has brought attention back to the issue of palestine the war has caused massive destruction in gaza and resulted in the deaths of more than 36000 people many countries are now expressing strong support for the creation of Palestine state this issue can be resolved only if a separate independent state of Palestine is created because the entire Palestine territory is now under the occupation of Israel recently Spain and Norway recognized Palestine as a state Arab countries like Saudi Arabia and Jordan insist that there will be no lasting peace in the region until the Palestine issue is resolved the widely accepted solution to this crisis is known as the two state solution so what is this two state solution see the two state solution is an idea to solve the conflict between israel and palestine by creating two separate countries one for jewish people israel and one for arab palestines palestine this means dividing the land in a way which allows both groups to have their own independent countries now let us see how this two state theory evolved and let us see the sequence of events one by one see during 1930s britain controlled the region of palestine during that period there were frequent conflicts between jews and arabs living in that region the british set up a commission to investigate this arab jewish conflict the commission which was called peel commission suggested creating separate jewish and arab states the arabs rejected this proposal after world war 2 the united nations proposed another partition plan this plan divided palestine into three parts a jewish state an arab state and an international zone for jerusalem according to this plan jews who were 32 percentage of the population received 56 percentage of the land arabs protested this unjust plan anyway the united nation general assembly approved the plan because jews got the sympathy of the world leaders due to holocaust tragedies on may 14 1948 the united nation declared the state of israel This triggered the first Arab Israeli war. The war started from the very next day of the formation of Israel. By the end of the war, Israel won and they took 22% more land than the United Nations plan had allocated to them. Then another war happened in 1967. This time the neighboring Arab states like Egypt, Syria and Jordan attacked Israel to help Palestine. This war was called Six Day War as it lasted only for 6 days and Israel won this war. to Israel captured several areas for example the west bank and east jerusalem from jordan the gaza strip and sinai peninsula from egypt and the golan high from syria israel still controls all these territories except the sinai peninsula which is returned to egypt after some time next important thing is camp david accord in 1978 it was a peace agreement between israel and egypt 
facilitated by the United States president. This agreement proposed self-governing authority for Palestinian in the West Bank and Gaza. This event marked a significant step towards peace in the Middle East. The Israeli Prime Minister and Egyptian President were awarded the Nobel Prize for their peace treaty. During this period, a political organization evolved in Palestine to democratically fight for this cause. It was called the Palestine Liberation Organization, shortly called PLO. PLO represented the aspirations of Palestinians. After Camp David Accords, again a peace agreement was signed between Israel and PLO. The Oslo Accords were agreements between Israel and the PLO. This agreement aimed at achieving peace in the Middle East. They were signed in 1993 and 1995. This agreement marked the first direct negotiation between leaders of Israel and Palestine. As per this agreement, Israel agreed to withdraw its military from parts of West Bank and Gaza, transferring control to the Palestinian Authority. Israel also agreed to grant self-governing authority to Palestine. As things started to go towards peace, the Israel Prime Minister was assassinated in 1995 by a Jewish extremist. This was due to the rise of right-wing extremism in Israel, which doesn't want to grant autonomy for Palestine and opposed Oslo Accords. This event combined with the rise of the right-wing party under Benjamin Netanyahu derailing the peace process. On the other hand, Palestine militant group Hamas also opposed the Oslo Accords and it complicated the ongoing peace efforts. Around 70,000 Jewish settlers live in the West Bank and East Jerusalem. Even if a new Palestine state is created, removing them would be politically difficult for Israel. Moreover, both Israel and Palestinians claim Jerusalem as their capital because Jerusalem was holy land for both Arabs and Jews. Even it is a holy place for Christians. So, if a two-state solution has to be implemented, who will gain the control of the Jerusalem city will still be a major problem. So, the issue of Palestine-Israel is much more than a political conflict. It is rooted in the religion and sentiments of two groups and has evolved for more than 2000 years. Ultimately, achieving lasting peace will require addressing not only the political aspects of the conflict, but also the religious and emotional dimensions that have shaped it over centuries. So these are all very relevant facts that you have to remember about the two-state solution. There is a solution like two-state policy, but it is not considered as a solution because the real problem is not political in nature, but religious in nature. Hope you get it. So with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. I have taken a previous year ethics question for our main answer writing discussion. Let me read out the question for you. What is meant by conflict of interest? Illustrate with examples the difference between the actual and potential conflict of interest. See, this is a very basic question coming straight away from the static part of the syllabus. This kind of questions need conceptual clarity in the ethics syllabus and we should also need to apply it with other parts of the syllabus to write a holistic answer. Remember, each of your arguments should have an example to enhance your argument. Now let us quickly see the skeleton of the answer. In the intro part, you can define what is conflict of interest, why it is occurring and its importance in ensuring no biasness in the decision making. Then you should also differentiate it with potential conflict of interest. So this is how we are going to address this particular question. Now we shall see how to write the intro part for this particular question. See conflict of interest is a kind of ethical dilemma which usually deals with the conflict between two interests. There is a dilemma between a public official's duty to serve the public interest and public official's private interest. There is a serious threat to ethical decision making as it will affect objectivity, increase biasness and etc. Moreover, this is a serious governmental issue as this leads to instrumental corruption and bribery. There are three types of conflict of interest. They are an actual conflict of interest where an officer is in a position to be influenced by their private interest when doing their job. A perceived conflict of interest where an officer is in a position to appear to be influenced by their interest when doing their job. Then the potential conflict of interest. This happens where an officer is in a position where they may be influenced in the future by their private interest when doing their job. So you can write these points in the introduction part and move on to the main body of the answer. In the main body of the answer, you have to write about the difference between the actual and potential conflict of interest with 
some quoted examples so you can write that an actual conflict of interest occurs when a circumstance or interest that lure the person to fulfill their own interest vis-a-vis -vis their obligation to government moreover it will erode public trust in the system for example a person is on the interview board of a selection committee his or her family member is appearing in the same interview such a scenario represents an actual conflict of interest on the other hand a potential conflict of interest means any action or decision or recommendation by a public official that could result in a financial benefit for self or relative or harm for his force here you can see that the potential conflict of interest differ from actual conflict of interest in terms of probability but both of them depend on the structure of the governmental system which could be manipulated for their favor see if there is a system which usually gives contract to a party without holding competitive bidding and justifying it on grounds of superior technology or first come first serve this may look cool and the person might not have gained anything from the agreement and the contractor might not be known to the person but following the above procedure gives rise to a potential conflict of interest and large scale corruption so now coming back to the discussion nowadays public institutions are seriously affected by conflict of interest in various ways for example awarding of contract to known person in exchange for personal favors then ministers or public representative getting involved in policy making in those areas of substantial personal interest for example a minister buying large acres of land in an area where a potential project from his department may be set up then leaking of secret information to other person which might be of personal advantage to him later then giving verdict in favor of a particular political party in, in view of future political appointments as post retirement benefits you can give all these examples for the conflict of interest finally let us see how we can combat conflict of interest firstly we should strive to enhance transparency and objectivity in decision making the officials should declare one's conflict of interest in the public and recuse one from any conflicting situations for example various judges who will rescue themselves from the cases in which they may have worked as a lawyer secondly we should take steps to reduce discretion and codify procedures this will reduce the potential conflict of interest and reinforce rule of law thirdly ensuring high ethical conflict as a civil servant one has to adhere to the standard of probity integrity in discharging their official duty like ashok kemka ias sahayam ias and etc so you can write these points in the main body of the answer and move on to the conclusion part here you can write that generally administration is a maze of situations where the individual's personal interest could potentially influence their professional duties creating a conflict of interest but the professionals should be aware of these potential conflicts and take steps to manage them steps like recusing themselves from decision making processes disclosing potential conflict to relevant parties or seeking guidance from an ethical committee could bring trust to the system so you can write these points in the conclusion part and give a balanced answer so this is how we have to approach a question from conflict of interest in the ethics paper so with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion Look at this article. It says that maintaining a healthy credit score is crucial for accessing loans and achieving financial goals. The article says that a credit score above 750 is ideal, while scores below 600 are considered poor. This credit score make it difficult to obtain loans from banks. Poor credit scores can result from bad credit behavior, fraud or error in credit reports. Regularly checking and correcting your credit report can help maintain a good score. So to improve your credit score, you require responsible credit usage, timely bill payments, and addressing old unpaid accounts. This good credit score will ensure better loan terms and financial stability. for a person in a longer run this is the crux of the news article given here so using this as an opportunity let us revise about credit rating and its regulation in india for the prelims exam it is a very important topic nowadays at least two questions are coming from this particular topic so now let us see what is credit rating see credit rating is a score or evaluation given to an individual company or country 
that indicates their ability to repay borrowed money. So in simple words, it measures credit worthiness which helps the lenders assess the risk of lending money to a borrower. A higher credit rating means the borrower is seen as low risk and more likely to repay their debt on time, while a lower rating indicates high risk. Okay, now we can see who can give credit rating. See in India, credit rating are provided by specialized agencies known as credit rating agencies or CRAs. The main CRAs in India include Credit Rating Information Services of India Limited, Crisil, then Investment Information and Credit Rating Agency of India, ICRA, then Credit Analysis and Research Limited, CARE, then Fitch Ratings India and Brickwork Ratings. These are all very very important credit rating companies. Just remember their names. These agencies evaluate the financial health of individual company and even countries and then assign a rating based on their analysis. We know that there should be someone to regulate these agencies, right? In India, credit rating agencies are regulated by Securities and Exchange Board of India, SEBI. SEBI has established guidelines and regulations to ensure that credit rating processes are transparent, reliable and consistent. Some key regulation measures include firstly registration, CRAs must register with SEBI to operate in India, then they should disclosure norms, that is they should disclose their rating criteria, methodologies and any potential conflict of interest. This is to ensure transparency. Then the CRAs must continually monitor the entities they rate and update their rating as necessary, very important. And finally CRAs are accountable for the accuracy and timeliness of their ratings and can be penalized for misconduct or negligence. So to sum it up, we can say that credit rating play a very important role in financial system impacting individual company and countries. So by understanding and maintaining their credit score, individual and businesses can secure their financial future and achieve their goals. These are all very important facts that you have to remember about credit score and credit rating in India. Remember the CRAs in India, Crystal, ICRA, CARE, Fitch Rating, Brickwork. Then these companies are regulated by SEBI in India. So with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Take a look at this news article. According to the news article, Tamil Nadu State Coastal Zone Management Authority has informed the National Green Tribunal that no prior clearances were given for constructing grayons on the Chengalpattu coast. Now suddenly this is a news because activist K. Saravanan has filed a petition against these structures and rocks being dumped in several villages. So an inspection revealed that except for Muttukadu which had two grinies, other locations had five to seven grinies each built by the fisheries department in response to fisher folks request. So the matter will be heard by the court on July 23rd with calls for action against the fisheries department for violation. So this is the crux of the news article given here. In this background, let us revise about coastal regulation zone in India from the prelims perspective. See the coastal regulation zone or the CRZ is designed to protect and conserve coastal environment while promoting sustainable development. The latest CRZ regulations notified in 2019 introduce several changes to balance environmental protection with developmental needs. For example, the regulations classify the coastal areas into different zones, each with specific rules and permitted activities. If you take CRZ1, this zone includes ecologically sensitive areas like mangroves, corals, sand dunes, national parks and wildlife habitats. It also covers area between low tide line and high tide lines. No construction is generally Generally allowed in Sierra Z1 except for projects related to defense, public utility like desalination plants and environmental conservation projects. Now if you look at CRZ2, this zone covers developed area close to the shore that already have substantial building and infrastructure. Here construction and reconstruction of buildings are allowed as long as they follow existing town and country planning regulations and the guidelines set by the coastal zone management plan CZMP. Now when we look at the CRZ 
three zone this zone includes relatively undisturbed area that are largely rural and areas that do not fall under crz2 in this particular area the area up to 200 meter from the high tide line is a no development zone where no construction is allowed except for repair of existing structures community infrastructure and certain public facilities between 200 and 500 meters from the hdl that is the high tide line regulated construction is allowed for building like homes and hotels following specific conditions and finally the coastal regulation zone 4 this zone applies to the water area from the low tide line to 12 nautical miles seawards including the water area around islands here fishing and other non polluting activities are permitted and the construction Construction of ports and harbors, foreshore facilities and bridges is allowed with appropriate clearances. These are very important facts that you have to remember about CRZ, especially for the prelims. They will ask the permitted activities and all. So just make a note of it and revise it. This way CRZ aims to protect India's coastal ecosystem while also allowing sustainable development and improving the livelihood of coastal communities. So with these learned points, now let us move on to the next part of the news article discussion, which is the preliminary practice question discussion look at this question about credit rating and its regulation in india three statements are given and you have to find how many statements given here is or are correct first statement says a credit rating evaluate the credit worthiness of individual company and countries and help lender assess the risk of lending money the statement is correct now the second statement says cras in india must register with the rbi to operate no they have to register with sebi now the third statement says a credit score above 750 is considered ideal while score below 600 or deemed poor the statement is correct so the correct answer for the question is option b only two moving on look at this question about coastal regulation zone here three statements are given i have to find the incorrect statement here here the first statement says crz1 includes areas like mangrove coral and national park this statement is actually correct and here no construction is generated generally allowed except for defense and environmental conservation projects okay now the second statement says crz3 designate a no development zone up to 500 meter from the high tide line where no construction is allowed see this statement is incorrect the no development zone is up to 200 meter from the high tide line not 500 meters now the third statement says crz4 includes the water area up to 12 nautical miles from the low tide line permitting only non polluting activities like fishing this statement is obviously correct since the question asked for only the incorrect statement here statement 2 is alone incorrect so the correct answer for the question is option a one only displayed here is the mains practice question for you today just go through the question try to answer it in the comment section we will review your question if you post an answer in the comment so with this we came to the end of the news article discussion if you like the video hit like do comment and don't forget to subscribe to shankar ias academy youtube channel now thank you so much for listening